Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different than normal. I've done a lot of cross grain bowls and I've ignored end grain. Uh, I do some end grain turning and I do some spindle turning, but um, I've never done this before. So what I'm going to do is I have this piece of ornamental cherry, uh, Japanese ornamental cherry, and it is green. And I'm going to make a little end grain bowl from it. So uh, join me as we, uh, as we see what comes of it. All right, since this bowl is end grain, I want to put a tenon on it so that as I hold it with the um, jaws of the chuck, I am compressing the fibers rather than pushing them apart. End grain will break apart when you, when you spread it with a uh, mortise. So a tenon is absolutely the best practice for holding an end grain piece. When I'm mounting in the jaws of the chuck, I always like to bring tailstock up and put a little bit of pressure because that helps center the piece. It is a self-centering job, but you want to make sure that the bottom of the piece is resting squarely on the shoulders of your chuck. That does it. And at this point, the tailstock is in my way because I am hollowing end grain.
So part of what I'm working on is I'm trying some new finishing techniques. And uh, so one of the uh, one of the techniques is uh, one of the people that I'm kind of studying is a gentleman named Cade Bulger out of Canada who does a tongue oil finish that is incredible. His finishes are amazing. So um, I am trying to learn his process. So one of the first things that he does is he does not sand much beyond 240 because of the oil finish. And this is a really finely turned little bowl. Uh, I got good cuts and this is 240. That's the first grid I sanded with and I'm not going to need to go above it uh, at this point in time. So literally by using the new cutting or slicing techniques that I learned from uh, Mark Soleil and using this new finishing process until I sand finish coats I'm not going to touch this with more than one piece of sandpaper. Now finish coats I will sand between coats at 400 and then after the first four or five coats of finish 500. But all this bowl is going to get today is one coat of 50-50 mix of uh, blood linseed oil and mineral spirits. After that it's got to dry for at least 24 hours. I'm going to take this little edge down which is okay if that's it, it doesn't uh, doesn't take away from the bowl at all to smooth this edge down. It is a live edge bowl after all. But uh, that will uh, soak into the wood and that will probably get three or four coats of that as it soaks into the wood and starts to permeate and then begins to um, polymerize and harden this green wood and this bark. So I'm really excited to see how this process works. And that's it. That, that The inside of the bowl is done for now. It's all about finishing from here on out. And I can reset and turn the outside. So we'll see. This process takes days. Uh, but I think it's going to produce a result that I've really been trying to work towards. So we'll see how it goes. So now I'm going to shape the outside. I want this to be roughly three millimeters thick. So I'm not going to not trying to see light through it or anything, but I do need to come down and around and get uh, mimic my shape and get my base set. So I'm going to rough it with my bowl gouge because it throws the shavings over my shoulder rather than in my face.
Okay, so I need to give myself a little bit more room here. Quickly, I will clean that off. Okay, we are flat. So now we're going to apply the first of many layers of finish. Alright, so I'm running out of mineral spirits, but I think I have enough to do, yeah, I got enough to do a 50-50 mix, and I have a little lid, so I've got enough to do the initial coat on at least two pieces before I have to go buy more mineral spirits. <clears throat> So the reason we're diluting the boiled linseed oil is because it's very thick and what we want, what we're trying to do here is saturate the wood. Boiled linseed oil is a polymerizing oil. Now this does have uh, chemical drying agents in it, however, once those evaporate, they're gone. So at this point in time, it is not safe. But once it is polymerized, and then when it has coats of tongue oil on top of it, pure tongue oil, it's perfectly safe. I swear by my finishes. I use my finishes in my home. I'm not going to sell something to somebody that's going to poison them. So all I'm going to do is just apply a coat of this from the top down and then from the bottom up so that it can begin to penetrate and soak in. And then this is going to go sit out of the way, hopefully out of the dust, and begin to dry. This is very, very green wood and it is extremely humid in North Carolina today, at least where I am. So it's going to take it two or three days to dry to a point where I can start applying tongue oil. But you'll begin to see what the finished piece will look like here in a few minutes. Now I'm just going to bring it back up. Make sure I don't have any runs, which I really don't. This is drinking this... Uh, drinking this linseed oil up pretty fast actually. Make sure I get it in those open cells. 
the water or the oil is going to displace the moisture so this might actually especially in this humidity today this might actually sweat I might actually see moisture coming out of this wood all right inside is done I'm going to do the same thing here when I flip the bowl over I'm going to go from the high spot to the low so that I can take out any drips but this is immediately pulling it in starting to replace the uh, water with the oil which is what I want and as this oil polymerizes it will actually harden and strengthen the wood so even though this is a very small delicate piece ultimately it's going to be very very strong and uh, it will be water resistant one of the nice thing about polymerizing oils is that the uh, molecule chains actually go through a process when exposed to oxygen and they polymerize they essentially turn into a plastic a biological plastic so again this is Japanese ornamental cherry green turned and then I am beginning a new to me finishing process but one that has been tried and trued so this little guy was <laughs> this little guy is going to take about a week or so to actually finish but I have enough wood left on the chuck that I can turn a partner to it maybe not necessarily a twin but a partner and I've got plenty of finish 50 50 B L O that way I know that it's boiled linseed oil cut at 50 percent not a jello shot Okay, let me set this out of the way right, and we'll turn two. that. This is going to be a little more shallow because I have to contend with the um, chuck when I when it comes time to the foot and to party. So this isn't going to be quite as dramatic a shape. Is that I've got a chuck so I've got a this is fairly shallow I've still got to have a little foot so I've got to be uh, very careful that I don't run my gouges into my chuck because I, the high-speed steel is sharp enough that it'll cut the chuck and I really don't want to do that I'm gonna start with the bowl gouge again just for rapid removal of large amount of material and I am going to take the bottom down and give myself a limit so I don't put my stuff with a uh, finer tool.
Yeah, I'm going to get that for a There you have it, two little Asian-inspired Japanese cherry, ornamental cherry bowls, green turned. Uh, and as I was discussing during turning them, I'm working on a new finishing process. So uh, I will have to shoot updates um, over the next week or so as I progress with the finish and show you what they end up with. <laughs>